Rebecca, thank you for being here today, albeit virtually. Rebecca Poland is a mission-based entrepreneur, author, you're many, many, many things, and that's why we're going to talk about it. <laughs> How would you describe yourself? Oh, yeah, that question is, is always the, the fun one and the hardest one to answer for me. I, as you said, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a multipreneur, multi-passionate, and I think if I were to summarize it in one sentence, everything that I do is geared towards connecting people with their happiest, most authentic self. And there are so many ways into that and so many methods for getting there. So it depends upon where we're starting. Um, you know, if for, I've been a nonprofit consultant for many years and I still work in that realm. Um, I like to think of my work kind of running the, the gamut, the layers of the Maslow's hierarchy where you start with, you know, basic physiological needs and safety and working up towards self-actualization. So in my community-based work, I'm helping assure healthy, you know, access to healthcare and, you know, and housing for underprivileged and underaccessed populations. And then, you know, as you go up the hierarchy, I provide uh, healing uh, coaching. I am uh, trained in a mindfulness-based somatic psychotherapy called Hakomi. I teach yoga and meditation kind of through that holistic healing lens. And so, yeah, everything that I do is geared towards everybody's health and well-being, whether it's, you know, through community-based housing, low-income housing, or leading a meditation class, I feel really grateful that I get to do all of those things. And yeah, I think the only other thing to say about what I do is that it's constantly evolving in the same, that, same way that we all are. Uh, even before this whole COVID you know, transition began, I've always been evolving on you know what I what I'm doing like in the last ever since I left my full-time consulting gig in uh, late 2016 it's just been this like constant unfolding that I've really been enjoying talking about it is harder <laughs> than doing it <laughs> well I mean one of the things I I, I love about you and, and what you do is that um, it is constantly evolving and it has so many facets to it and I think you know, for so long we've lived in a in a world where you know you, you had to have this fixed way of defining yourself in your profession, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, I mean, maybe people will have a couple of different career changes, maybe one or two, and that was it. You know, but with you, like your what you do is like a living, breathing thing, it's constantly evolving, and um, and I like that because I also feel like in my work it's always constantly evolving too and try but trying to explain what you do is can be difficult <laughs> mm -hmm. but okay so I mean we can break down a couple of the things that you do absolutely your book is it out is it available so right I uh, started teaching yoga and meditation and and it evolved into a blog and it evolved into a book called faith underwater uh, the subtitle is it's a guidebook for rising and it is in the editing process right now. So it is so close and I'm really excited about it because it talks about all the things we need to focus on right now around being with discomfort with skill, sitting with discomfort, healing through it, and different practices that you can do to you know, do the healing work and do the constant sort of self maintenance of you're getting resourced within your own capacity to be peaceful and joyful and grounded, as well as studying yourself in terms of like how you're organized um, in your psyche and like what needs tending. The way into that is through knowing yourself, know yourself, heal yourself. So um, yeah, the, the book is one of the, the projects that I'm working on now that's geared towards just getting people excited about doing the work and practicing you know like that regular daily tending to the process of just uncovering ourselves and and uncovering our joy and our peace is really what i'm passionate about so yeah 
Short answer, no, the book isn't out yet. Um, I set it aside to develop, um, to pick up a project that I've been wanting to do since 2016 uh, called Embody You. And I just think that's more important right now in terms of just getting practices out to people. I th the, the book will follow it very closely. Um, but now is a time whenever I post anything, for example, on social media, like just one little tiny pose that I know will provide some stress relief. People are so interested in that. Any of the tools and the, t the tips and techniques that you can physically be doing right now um, to manage stress, to reduce stress, to move through discomfort. Um, I'm just getting a lot of interest in that. And so that's the direction I'm heading right now is creating this online platform for multiple teachers who do what I do, but know uh, the different aspects of what I love uh, in more depth. And so it's better to just step aside and let people who are even you know, more experienced than me do it. And I'm creating the infrastructure for that. So uh, that's an online instruction platform that is uh, coming together as we speak. I have a meeting about it in 45 minutes. <laughs> so it's really exciting. And th this, uh, when you're, what your, your practice is, what, what you're talking about, is that mostly yoga or is it also meditation? Yeah, so yoga, meditation, different kinds of physical movement, um, different kinds of yoga that you wouldn't find necessarily at a regular yoga studio. So more therapeutically focused, more focused on um, the fascia of the body, more focused on the deep roots of the philosophy underneath the yoga practices. And um, yeah, more guided meditations than you would find in a, a traditional you know, meditation class. So so yeah, I, I kind of see what this collection of offerings is um, geared towards is like a complement to a yoga studio. I teach at yoga studios. I'm not interested in competing with them. I think there's plenty of amazing content and there are plenty of amazing yoga teachers out there. So I was interested in going deeper into the healing aspect of, of yoga with respect to, um, you know, having trauma-informed yoga is another offering. Uh, we have a restorative yoga for chronic pain. Um, so really getting a little bit more targeted towards reasons people might be coming to a yoga class that are that would make them less excited about a standard power yoga or vinyasa yoga practice, but um, people who need to slow down, people who need to, you know, focus in on a, a health challenge or a mental health challenge. Uh, that's what this resource is really about is more of the healing aspect of what yoga and also what meditation can do. And I think that's extremely important right now. I think a lot of people are more concentrated on the, the well, the, the need for, for something healing in their lives and mm -hmm. be able to get away from the stress and anxiety of the current situation that we're in. So that's, that's great that you're offering that. How, how can people um, uh, get in contact with you about these services? So it is still in development. My embody you um, Instagram account is the best way to get updates and it's um, with an I. So E M B O D I. Y-O-U is the Instagram account, or you can just find my account. I'm always linking to it. Um, and I wanted to mention one other really important component of this offering is that it is very much community focused. So I have a, a co-regulation nation Facebook group that has been um, part of this effort. Uh, it started in January. We have 135 people. It's a really beautiful community. We post regularly on, you know, how we're doing, how we're feeling. Like it's been, it's almost like we created it before the, the COVID crisis happened and it's exactly what's needed right now. We do. Uh, so my, my sister, Emily, um, she's a, a dancer with Miami city ballet. And so she brings all of her international dancer friends and I bring, uh, you know, people in co-regulation nation. And today at noon, we had a group meditation I saved the audio, I, I posted to the group, and I'm just naming all of this as an example of um, the connection component that I think is so important right now, particularly. Um, 
And another way the connection and community building piece of what I'm doing is uh, manifesting is I'm working with Wolf Moon Eduardo, a local incredible tarot reader, and we're going to be doing community tarot reading. Um, so it's just a, another way of another way into oneself, thinking about one's path in life, doing it in a fun community setting, um, because so much of uh, like this isn't about you know getting on a yoga mat and and having it look a certain way or sitting in meditation and having it be the form of what meditation looks like. It's the output, and the output of these practices is being happy, being joyful, being peaceful, and just being yourself, like being yourself just a little bit more comfortable in your own skin. When this all started, I felt very helpless in, mm. in what to do to be of service during a time of need. And it's great that you, you fully have that, like you are providing such a vital and important very important thing to the community and that must feel very fulfilling to you i just got chills thank you for seeing that um yeah it means a lot to to be ready to do this to have already been doing it not knowing I, you know i wrote a book called faith underwater about resilience before this happened i was like there was some some strange intuition that i've been following like this plan for Embody You that I'm talking about, this healing platform has been in the works for three years and it never felt right to, to pull together. And all of a sudden, it's just everybody's ready for it. The teachers are ready. They're more home so they, they can, you know, do this online instruction. I always envisioned it to be an online instruction. I always envisioned it to be home produced and a little bit like, like not high slick anything. And here we are, that's all we can do. So there's just some interesting things around like what I've always envisioned and it's never felt like the right time. And I'm just trusting now that it is the right time to do all of this. Mm -hmm. And that's really the way that I've always worked is I've always just been dialed into what does it feel like needs to be done right now? So I posted right after this, the whole crisis started to unfold. I laid out my mat. And I was like, okay, I think I'm going to offer online live yoga with Inner Light Yoga Studios. And nobody was online yet. Everybody was pivoting and trying to figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let me just see what it looks like. So I put my phone in my tripod and set it up and hit record. And I did two sun salutations. And it's posted on my Instagram. You can see me during the second sun salutation where I take that exhale. And I was like coming back into myself. So I like, you can watch me process my own stress and anxiety in just like, I don't know, three minutes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is what we all need right now. We just need to practice. And so I think the offerings that I have always done are just geared towards whatever I'm sensing is needed in my community. So I worked with uh, Kim Chandler at Inner Light to... I was the guinea pig. <laughs> I made every mistake you could possibly make with every online class I did. The sound was terrible. The video stopped. I didn't know how bad my inter internet was until I went online. Everything went wrong. And people stuck with it and kept coming back. And um, they just needed the yoga. And I, like, I knew that. I sensed that. And or I trusted that if I needed it, others also needed it. And I was right. So now, you know, Inner Light is totally online. And I was able to just shift to, okay, what else is needed? And what else is needed is people are going to be sitting with their stuff. This is a really hard time right now. People are either alone too much or they're with the same people too much. And so what they need in either case are practices that help them get resourced internally, either to get space from the people driving them crazy <laughs> or to remind themselves of what else is here within if there's too much solitude. So, so yeah, that's, that's my, I just listen and, and do my best to respond, I guess is what I'm trying to say. No, it, it's so, um, it is so interesting because I think we've all been talking about that of, you know, we, we, we have to sit with our feelings and our emotions and there's no, there's, I mean, yeah, there's the internet, but there's very few distractions. So mm -hmm. if there's issues with it, you know, I hate to use the word issues, but if you have something underlying 
that that you haven't really dealt with you have to now you know mm -hmm. whether it be you personally or in the relationship that you're in like it this is a time of really trying to 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 heal from this whatever. is a time of uncovering it's like the the water's going down and all the rocks are right there exactly. you know and um I, so yeah i i started a how to sit with your shit series <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That's what it's called on, on Instagram. I, that was what I mentioned. I did a yin posture, super simple yin posture and like some, some, um, guidance for posture for meditation, um, and some tools and tips for moving through. So I have an acronym called snap. So if you have an emotion coming up, the hardest thing to do is turn towards it. And so just snap is stop and name it and ask what it needs and provide what it needs. And it's so simple and so hard to do. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I, I think my main desire and wish with everything I'm doing is just holding extra compassion for everybody who is having to turn towards their stuff or being forced to turn towards their stuff. There's a reason we've been avoiding it. And that also deserves compassion, you know? So, this 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 moment that we're all being brought to in different ways um and everybody's moment is going to look different some people are experiencing much deeper very immediate challenges and others are being mildly inconvenienced um so it's going to manifest differently for everybody but for the people who are really being forced to face their stuff uh I, i'm really grateful to see the entire yoga and meditation and healing community really stepping up and you know bringing that seva that selfless service out and so i'm just kind of in lockstep with that community and doing the same thing that is that is great and much much needed um it's a it's a difficult time i remember you know at the beginning of it all i was very worried about how i would be in all of this and and how i would react and respond and it wasn't great for a couple of weeks, um, but then I got this sense of real hope because mm -hmm. I feel like we are changing. You know, we we are figuring out what works, what doesn't, and we're ha we're all collectively having this massive rethink of the way we do stuff and the way we respond to our emotions as well. And to be there to have the support that you're giving people is is an incredible service um so thank you for doing that thank you and i feel like my main role these days is supporting the people that do the support you know like i'm meeting with my embody you teachers in a in a little while and i feel my role shifting to being one of putting the spotlight on other teachers like these videos that i've been doing for months i feel like you know they're like the rebecca show and i've just been the host without a guest <laughs> <laughs> and so I've actually been interviewing all my teachers in the last week or so. I've got um, another few to go, but it's been really funny. Even like the lighting, like the lighting on, on the people I've been talking to is better on them than me. And I'm like, good. Like, this isn't about me. This is about promoting and supporting and encouraging the teachers who some of them are very self-effacing and like really humble. And my job is to, to put the spotlight on them and say, I believe in you. Now go do the thing. The world needs you more than it needs you to be self-conscious or worried. Um, so yeah, I just went on some kind of riff there, but that's really um, more than doing it myself. I'm creating the structures that support many teachers in doing it even better than I could. That's great. And so, I mean, I mean, I was going to ask you, how have you pivoted your business during this time? But it almost seems like your business was made for this in a way. Um, kind of. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, I would say like more of my work is like, obviously I was teaching yoga in person. Um, and now I do it through a class I call Speakeasy Yoga. <laughs> so I teach it, I, I do it over the phone because it's students I've been teaching a long time. They know my cues and every once in a while they get lost. They're like, okay, is it left hand green? Like, where are we? But most of the time it works great. And I am teaching more yoga online, leading more online meditations. Um, mostly it's just like the consulting community work that I do is, is virtual you know, 
so it's more of how the what I'm doing is a little bit different in terms of I'm I'm changing the order of things and I'm I'm putting the book not aside but behind in line um, behind embody you because I think the practices and instruction and practices is more important. So so the pivot was was like changing the the priority list mm -hmm. to be responsive to what I felt like was in need. That yeah well. I, I was going to also ask what the uh, what the future is for you, um, but it just seems like it's it's going to continue to expand and grow and according to what the needs are of of the community that we live in. Yeah, I think um, what I see for for embody you is uh, I think it's such a niche offering in terms of it being more healing oriented. And so it's naturally going to have a more national focus. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it, but it has Rhode Island roots. All of the teachers either live in Rhode Island or, fr or are from Rhode Island. And I've always said that like, there's so much amazing talent in Newport. Like, like I, I've always wanted to do something like a Newport export in terms of just the arts and incredible yoga instruction and like just so many intelligent, talented people um, on so many fronts, music, like the music community also. Um, and so this is my Newport export, is just showing the world how rich and deep the knowledge and quality of instruction there is here. So it's time. It's time to you know shine the light on uh, the talent that's here. Um, and I, I have a feeling that's happening more now that we're all more virtual and we're all connecting more virtually. I think that's that's the cool thing. Like, you know, we can focus a lot with, with the COVID crisis on what we're missing out on. I miss hugs. I mean, for heaven's sake, I promoted my book with a free hugs booth twice <laughs> and it got more fun each time that I did it. I miss hugs. I miss, I miss, you know, like, like this, the eye contact and like the, being in a room with another nervous system of somebody I don't see all the time. You know, like the cross pollination that you get to do when you just are out and about in a coffee shop, you don't even, know the people you're sitting around so those things we can focus on missing or we can think about well what's possible in this new world where we're connecting in a different way and i can say with the virtual meditations that i lead for example it's wild how much connection you can create with people who are you know last week i had people in colombia and spain and in Miami and in Newport, and you could just feel this like circle of true connection. Everybody commented on it afterwards. And so, yeah, there, there are things that are more possible working virtually. I'm just watching creativity explode in terms of the ingenuity that people are showing, uh, not to mention the resilience, the watching people lead exercises and sing with mu with instruments in Spain and in Italy, like that moved me to tears. Just, you know, things like that are just showcasing human resilience and creativity under duress. So I'm as inspired as I am frustrated and annoyed by the inconveniences. <laughs> yeah, I, I 100% understand that um i think there's just a, a more of an openness and it's obviously a global openness um because we're all in this together and and in that way you know we're, we're able to create these beautiful connections albeit virtually because we're mm -hmm. open to it you know we want that we we, we know that we need each other and it, it is it's a, it's so beautiful to see and hopefully we can keep it going when and if this is all over. Um, mm -hmm. but, well, it's just well, a matter of time. Like, the, it, I don't think we'll be the same when it's all over. I think that, um, and I think that was a question that you asked um, indirectly was like, how are we going to be, how are we going to interact differently? And I think even when this is all over, there's just going to be, you know, during this period, I feel like I've gotten more aware of like who my closest people are. And then who my acquaintances are and who shows up in my life and who is just there <laughs> in my life. And, and I've heard that from other people of like the real authentic connections are coming more clear because we are less distracted. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think we're 
more aware of our inner experience and and you know when we relate to somebody it's always how does this feel in me when i'm connecting with them and so i think we just have more space to figure out who in our life really matters and we're going to step out back into the world with an awareness of quality over quantity mm -hmm. of connection and i also think you know i saw a friend of mine yesterday for the first time in like two months and it felt like i'd just seen her and so I think that we'll be surprised at how quickly we're just going to get back to connecting and, and interacting the way we, we did before. But I'm hearing an 18 month arc. I don't think we're going to be in isolation for 18 months, but our lives are going to be different until this pandemic is um, you know, totally under control. So I think the more that we can stay present in the moment and, and less worried about everything happening in the future, the better. And that's what practices like meditation and self-study and yoga are for is getting okay with whatever is and being okay in spite of it, because of it, regardless of it. That equanimity, you know, that, that spacious grounded peace that exists regardless of what's going on and almost because of what's going on that I always teach about. So, yeah. That's definitely been a, big lesson that I've had to learn is you can, you can have inner peace <laughs> even when the world outside is falling apart. Still working on it though. Um, well, Rebecca, it's a practice. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is like you, I, I know you're, you've said that to me many times, like it's a practice. It's something you have to exercise. Um, but well, thank you so much for, um, for speaking with me here today and uh, I can't wait to read your book when it comes out. Thank you. And I hope to have you taken some of my online live classes on Embody You as well. And I'm really honored that you thought of me and reached out. And um, yeah, happy to, to be with you, even if only virtually for now. We'll, we'll do a good big hug later. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And in the meantime, yeah, I will definitely, um, I was looking on your website today, all the great classes you're teaching. Uh, I, I've also recognized in the past week that it's extremely important to get back into yoga because it does, it certainly makes me feel better. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think Rebecca Poland.com is a good place to send people for now. Okay. Um, embody you.com is imminent within the next couple of weeks. Um, e M B O D I Y O U.com. All right. Thank perfect. you for letting me spell that out. <laughs>